my first practice, my first official practice of, of the season. You know, it's, it's, it's a little, it's different because over the, since we're able to work with players over the summer and the two hours a week, it always is, uh, it's good because we have so many new faces and so many, uh, and a lot to teach and a lot to do. But we've gotten a good head start with everybody being in summer school, everyone being um, healthy. I mean, you know, Jerem, Demario missed the last couple of days with an ankle, with an ankle sprain, but he should be okay today. But anytime there's a new season, there's a new energy and new enthusiasm, and our kids are energized and, and excited about this coming season. We've got a very uh, tough road ahead of us. Uh, it's been a it's been a tough week in college basketball, and for a coach like myself who's been in it for been coaching for 45 plus years, it's uh, you think you've seen it all, and then we have been, you know the the, um, the situation we the situation we had earlier this week with um, with the FBI being involved with uh, uh, investigating coaches, and that's always a uh, that's kind of a damper on the season, I mean, on the starting the season. But but through it all, I know we'll get through it. I made a comment last night up in Nashville. At a fundraiser for coaches versus cancer and American Cancer Society. You know, coaches are going to coach, teachers are going to teach, we're going to do the best we can. Um, you know, it's just um, you're always uh, you're concerned about friends in the business because uh, I know all those coaches that are, that are involved, hopefully, they'll, they'll get resolved. Uh, and I said before, you know, you got to do the right things in this business, and that's. Um, and it's never, the time is always right to do the right thing. That's one thing my dad taught me was make sure. And then, you know, you can, and sometimes you have to make decisions and then you have to make the decision right. And so we're trying to make sure that we, our players understand that uh, there's, a, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And so I take a lot of pride in, um, in this profession and what we do to teach and, uh, and guide young men. I'm very blessed to have you know, over 25 plus players that have played for me that are in the coaching profession. So it's a, uh, it's, it's been, but through it all, you know, you're, the season will go on, basketball will go on, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But to talk more about this group, our team, this 17 18 uh, edition of uh, the Memphis Tigers. I like what I've seen so far. Guys have been working extremely hard, both in the classroom and on the basketball court. They're, uh, so we're getting the you know good leadership from our veteran players, especially Jeremiah and Jamario. Uh, so those are very positive things. I think we have uh, you know, we've added a lot of depth and a lot of experience. By that I mean playing experience with guys, especially with junior college players that have played numerous games, over probably 60 or 70 games in their uh, junior college career. So that it's a level of maturity and experience uh, that we really didn't have. So that's something we're, we're excited about as well. The bulk of these players are, are your players. Uh, you're the ones you recruited, brought in. What type of a difference does that make from, from last year inheriting a bunch of the players? Well, they're our players. Um, our players are Saul, Gigi, and Brian. <laughs> you know, so they're our players. I say ours, I'm talking about the university, sure. this community, this city. So, uh, and that's why they came here. They came here, obviously, to play for, play for the University of Memphis. Um, and I tell everyone when I go in their home, that's why you choose a program. Obviously, we appreciate that you want to play for Coach Smith and our staff. I know Coach Smith could drop dead tomorrow or be fired tomorrow. So come here for the right, you know, for the reason. Get an education and play at a great institution and a, and a great conference and to have the fun experience of, uh, of, uh, of playing collegiately and playing college basketball. And that's what it's about, you know, getting that experience. But I went off the tangent. 
But yeah, these kids, are, uh, these young men are mature physically. I think they're mature mentally. They've, uh, you know, we've been testing them, you know, obviously throughout our conditioning program, our strength training program. Uh, I've been very impressed uh, with Randy Flores, our strength coach, and, and how he's uh, developed guys in the weight room. You know, they all have, other than a couple of mile times, they've done well in that regard. So that's what I mean by testing. Now it's, now it's testing them when the intensity is picked up. We'll pick it up now. It's been really uh, two hours of work during the week. Now, it, now it's ratcheted up to 20 hours a week. So it'll be interesting to see how they play. But we, we, I think we've gotten a, a good passing team. I think we'll be physical, be able to rebound the ball. We'll have better depth, you know, players coming off the bench that, we, uh, that can really pick up the intensity and keep the intensity as we try to extend our defense and attack more uh, in transition. So uh, it's the type of team, the type of players we want to coach, and, and I think they fit in with, with our system as well. We've got, as I mentioned before, we have you know, Kareem Abzab, who's a 6'10 player inside. We have uh, Mike Parks, who's a big body guy, 6'9", about you know, 260. So we've got something we haven't had. We didn't have last year. It's been a tough week, tough month, tough week for, for college basketball. Do you take comfort in knowing with moves like this that the FBI isn't coming to your offices and that you've gotten the right way? Well, you, you, uh, you know, we all live in glass houses. You know, I'm not perfect, and no one is in any form or fashion. So you know, certainly we all have done something we, 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 we wish we'd never done. And uh, so, but yeah, I can I sleep pretty good at night, knowing that um, uh, the softest pillow you can sleep on is a clear conscience. So I, I feel pretty comfortable with who I am and what we've been able to do in this business um, over my what, 25 years as a head as a head coach in Division One and what, 36 years, 30 some years in in college coaching. So, but again, no one's perfect, and I'm not. But I know that, that I feel for those guys, and especially Rick Pitino, who I work for, is a very dear friend. And it, um, it, it's really, it's just gut-wrenching. You know, it really is. It's, it's tough to, to see because you, you, uh, you care about people. You care about, you care about kids. You care about their lives. You care about their families. And, uh, so it has been. Does it make recruiting easier for those who do it the right way? Nothing's easy. In other words, everybody did it, do it. So nothing's ever easy in recruiting or playing. If you ever played the game or ever coached, if you have to work a job, it's not easy. You know, work is work. It's one thing my dad told me, he taught me a long time. So don't, don't rush it. Don't get distracted by it because you're going to work the rest of your life. Is this a team you feel so that's, that? That's the, way I, that's the way I've operated. You know, and I, he talked about longevity. When you think about the long term, you don't rush them. You don't make, you don't take shortcuts. You don't, you don't. If you make a mistake, admit it and move on. So, uh, and that's what we try to do in, in everything we've, we've done. So, uh, that's and I'm very grateful that I had parents that taught me that, you know, those those values of, uh, of doing things the right way. You feel like your team or the or program as a whole is a Operating with a chip on your shoulder and something to prove this year? I never look at that coaching or playing or competing as a chip on you. I always want guys to do their best. And so if you can, and we just, and I tell them all the time, good is not good enough when better is expected. So we expect them to be better every day. And I think that's what we've tried to communicate to them that um, you, know, you can't be, you know, I don't use a lot of outside, you know, Stimulation. To, I think if you're if you're an athlete and you're competitive, you're gonna you know you're gonna go as hard as you can. It's not gonna matter uh, what media, what anybody says about you. You know you're gonna you're giving your best effort. And that's all we can ask. Yeah, yeah. Well, we gotta learn to play together. I think you know trying to figure out who fits where. You know, it's been even though we've had time this summer 
there's still a different, there's a different uh, atmosphere when the intensity is turned up. And now we are filming and evaluating players and trying to figure out who's going to start and who's going to play. And then how players are going to respond to coming off the bench or the role they have to play. So defining roles and how we're going to play. I think we recruited multi you know, versatile athletes and that's what I like. You know, I like that we can press, you know, we can zone. I think we're better, we can shoot the three pretty well. I think we've got some good outside shooters. Jamal Johnson, Jeremiah has improved a lot. I think guys like Jamal Jer Jer Rivers has, in has improved. I think Lanier Thornton, Kareem Bruton. You know, we really have helped ourselves and we've improved in those areas. So having said that, we're still trying to determine yeah, the fact we were just meeting today, I said, fellas, how? Yeah, and we're not going to change much. You know, we've done some things and been pretty good at what we've done over the years, but, but we can always improve. So, uh, and every team is different. Uh, so we'll have to see how we, uh, how this, but we got to be able to defend. And that's, that's the number one priority is making sure that we're a good, not just good defensive team, but a great defensive team. Uh, and create all, and create some, the offense, because that's we had trouble scoring last year. We, we, had a, we didn't have a very deep bench. Uh, we, there's a lot, a lot of pressure on our, on one player really to carry a lot of scoring. I think we have a lot more balance this year. Tom, what would your message be to the fans with so many new faces? A lot of people don't know what this team can be. What would, what would be your message to them in terms of expectations or what to be excited about? Well, come to Memphis. Madness. It's going to be a great time to meet them. Right. Personally, they're going to be they're going to be autographing. They can go up and shake their hands. They can personally see what these guys are like. I know it's hard when you sit in the stands and you're reading the paper to really recognize and identify with players. But I think they'll really will, will get better. Uh, and that's that's the other thing is just any opportunity they have to uh, to check out check out what they what they. Um, so I just let them know that we're going to be a very uh, competitive team. I think we're going to, uh, I never like to use the word surprise, but, but we'll be a very good team. But we've got some very talented players. And you know, we have the number one recruiting class in this league for a reason. And we'll see how we, how, how the things fall from there. So I think people can be excited about that. Uh, as I said from before, I don't promise anything. I promise our guys will play hard. They'll play together, and if they can overcome coaching, they can be play smart. But uh, it's going to be a fun, fun year. Coach, I just want the people, the fans, and everyone to understand. Okay, Coach Judge, do you have your starting five minutes? Are you sure to name them right now? No, I don't. I never. I don't think I've named a starting five. Heck was that? <laughs> well, we don't have a starting five. I think Jeremiah, obviously, being one of the top players in this league, with five, with five, the yeah, average the fifth in the league in assists. Second in the league in steals. Jamario certainly has a real shoe in as a starter, you know, but he's got to earn it. Yeah. And that's the same way with everybody else, whether it's Kareem Bruton, or whether it's Kareem Azam, or, you know, they all have opportunities. Mike Park, you know, it's just that's what we're trying to do. That's what practice is for. See who is going to rise to the occasion and who's going to step up and be that. that, that Daughter. Who are some of the uh, leaders right now? Well, the leaders? Yeah. Oh, I well, our captains are uh, J Jeremiah and uh, Jamario. I think those two, because they've been through it before, they know the level of intensity of, that we expect. And um, so they're leading by example. But we have a lot of mature people, as I said before. I think a guy like uh, even Davenport Olo is a pretty quiet guy. You know, uh, Kareem Bruton is a real, he's got great leadership skills. Malik, well, he's a point guard coming out of junior college. So there's a lot of guys, and that's what I mean about stepping up. They all are, they seem to be getting along well together. So, uh, but, but if you ask me the leaders, I would say those two, Jeremiah and Mario. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you all.